Joining me now to break down all of this is David Doniger. He's the policy director at the Climate and Clean Air Program of the Natural Resources Defense Council. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank Let's you. start, uh, if we can, with President Obama, his inaugural address. Um, this is a speech where he talked about climate change. Let's take a listen, and I want to get your reaction. We will respond to the threat of climate change knowing that the failure to do so would betray our children and future generations. He talks about betrayal of our children and future generations. He gives it a sense of urgency. Do you think things are changing in that regard? Yes, I do. And it's, it's very encouraging to hear this. My children, his children, he's thinking about the future and the legacy that we are going to leave. So this is a, a real opening for action in the U.S. There's been this debate about climate change, as you well know, going back to the 80s. But what's interesting, uh, you know, talking about the President of the United States, this is the first presidential debate where the issue never came up in the questions. Uh, dating back, I looked, 1988 was the yeah. first one, the vice presidential debate between Quayle and Benson. It was a question that came out. Um, what does that say about uh, it as an issue? Well, I think it says more about what reporters chose to ask about. The President been speaking about this during the campaign, but more insistently since election night and then on up to the inaugural, where he put climate change into the top three or four priorities for him in the second term. Uh, this is something that he can do a lot on using the laws that are already on the books in the United States, in particular, our Clean Air Act. You mentioned it says a lot about reporters, but I think it doesn't it say something about those uh, those short little concise answers. This is not an easy issue where you can just right. kind of describe it in 20 seconds. And that may be one of the reasons why. Is that one of the reasons why it seems like everything's in neutral and there doesn't seem to be any movement? Well, actually, if you look back at the first term, what he accomplished, the most important thing was a very strong increase in the standards for how clean our cars have to be and how far they'll go on a gallon of gas. They will get twice as far in a gallon of gas, and they'll emit half as much carbon pollution uh, in, in, when these standards are fully in place uh, about 10 years from now, and they're ramping up in between. So now is the time to tackle the carbon pollution from our power plants, which are the largest source of this dangerous pollution in the United States. We, we're talking about the U.S., but uh, our audience uh, has spent a lot of time in recent weeks looking at what's going on in Beijing. Yeah. And we have these reporters talking, and it's just this blanket of smog behind them. What are your thoughts on that? Well, actually, my organization works in China on energy efficiency and on cleaning the air and trying to help uh, the Chinese government, the Chinese people, find solutions to this problem. There are solutions. You can have a cleaner power system. You can have cleaner cars. And uh, uh, there's uh, certainly the need for it in China. And, and how about the international community? What steps should they be taking now? Because it, it's, it's interesting. This is a slow process, but it's going to take a long time to reverse it, too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. The consequences of the pollution we put in the air now will last for hundreds of years. So you really have to get on it, or we are really mortgaging the future of our children and our grandchildren. I'm focusing on what the United States brings to the table the next time we get together as a world community to try to negotiate an agreement. And we have to show here that we have taken the steps to curb the biggest contributors of our own, the power plants and the cars, uh, a few other things. These are things that the president can do under the Clean Air Act and the energy efficiency laws that the Congress has uh, already passed in the, in the years before. So he doesn't need to go to the Congress for new legislation. He needs to implement the laws we already have. David Doniger, thank you so much for coming in and talking about this important subject. Thank you very Appreciate much. It.